If that thing jumps out of there, this whole thing will just rotate on this bar and we'll be dead. It'll be fine, bro. Quit your whining. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a couple things to go over on the front of this Barracuda suspension. I've already got the suspension on the way, but while we're waiting, we've got to do some modifications in here in order to fit the coil springs. So one of those things is we have to cut a significant notch in the original unibody frame rail here so that the coil spring can pass through and clear and not hit the frame. So this past week, one of my guys has been working on that. And so he's got this, uh, you can see there how much we cut out. We didn't quite get into the other wall, but we did cut out a pretty good chunk there. And then we're gonna weld in this eighth inch section of eighth inch tubing in there. That'll get welded solid, dressed out real nice. And then, um, then we'll come back and we'll, we'll fill in all these little gouges and things from when we had to cut all the, the original brackets off of there. And then that'll basically give us a nice clean slate for mounting those laser cut suspension parts that are on the way from send cut sit. So that's one of the things that we need to look at. Other thing that we're gonna have to do on this is figure out a different solution for the oil pan. So after designing all the front suspension and everything, this is a, a pan off of a Dodge truck. So it's got a deep, deeper rear sump, but the problem is it's a little too deep for what we're needing. So we actually need to shorten this by about an inch and a half. It needs to be about no deeper than that right there. So we're either gonna cut this one. If we just cut it and, and smush the cap up and re-weld it, that's gonna reduce our capacity by probably a quart or so of oil. So we don't really wanna reduce the amount of oil in the engine. So if we do that, we'll either like widen it or first I'm gonna check and see if anybody makes one that already does what we're wanting to do. Might not look as original as this one, but so we're gonna do some checking on that. So if we can't find one, we're gonna to have to cut this one up and modify it and then repaint it. Because right now the oil pan is hanging down further than everything else. Um, but, but the front of this pan works out beautifully for the rack and pinion. So. You know, I got a feeling if even if we do find another one, the front of it's probably going to be too thick. So then I don't want to be modifying. I don't want to buy another one just to modify another one. I'd rather just, I've already spent the money on this one, so we might as well modify this one. So we'll keep you informed on that. Now, the next thing we need to do is check fit, test fit the radiator, which this is a really nice radiator from US Radiator. It's built specifically for 67 Barracuda with a big block. So we're gonna test fit this just to verify that it bolts in. We've got the fan shroud that fits this radiator and a big block, we're gonna test that. And then we've also got a fan that we're gonna test, a mechanical fan. This car's gonna get a mechanical fan. And so we're gonna test fit all that just so for peace of mind that we know it's all gonna go together in the end. So let's do that. We're gonna lower the car down and check it. All right, we are ready to test fit this radiator. This is a nice part from US Radiator. So the bottom has slots on it and I've already got the bolts uh, threaded in. So that allows you to just easily slide it down and set it on those bolts. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to try and figure out how to bolt it up, especially if there's just one person. So, so far we are looking good. That thing went right in there. This one, look at that, that one lines up. All right, so there's one bolt there, this one. So this one's a little bit off, but I did notice when I put that lower bolt in, the nut on the core support was a little bit messed up. So this one's not lining up because of that. So we're gonna have to, this is why you test fit things. Cause see that upper bolt, can't get it in there because that lower nut is messed up, which is causing the radiator to sit too high. So most guys would probably just hog this out. I'm not doing that. I might hog out the bottom slot or, but really what I need to, the right thing to do is fix what's wrong. And so in this case, it's the nut 
See that little square nut in there? See that little nut back there? That is messed up down there. So I need to replace that nut. But for now, this is a good, this will be good enough for just testing what we want to test. I'm just going to snug this upper bolt so that it holds the radiator square to the core support. So that's close enough for what we're checking. Now I'm going to get the fan shroud and the fan. I'll be right back. All right, so we are, uh, we're going to take the oil pan off. We're going to support the front of it with a big jack stand. And then we're gonna try and shift the engine back like a half of an inch to gain us a little bit more fan clearance to the radiator. So we've got room on the firewall. We've got a little bit of room on the transmission mount to do that. The only thing that I think that's gonna change is the motor mounts with my new cross member that I designed are gonna be like this a little bit, which isn't a big deal. So uh, we gotta gain some room for the, for the fan. If that doesn't gain us enough clearance, then we're gonna have to look into modifying these brackets on the radiator that will allow the, fan, the uh, radiator to move forward a little bit. So we'll see if we can get it out of the engine and go from there. Shouldn't have painted this oil pan yet. I thought it was just gonna work. We're gonna have to modify it. And the good thing is you already got it up. So. And the other good thing is we got a paint shop and we've already got this color mixed up. All right, now we gotta, we just gotta loosen, well, let's get a jack under it. Jack stand. I'm gonna put it a little bit towards the back so that it naturally wants to fall backwards. Actually, I'm gonna turn it. I think I'll put it under flat spot so it's a little. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna get something to go across there, like a board, make it a little more stable. We don't want it jumping off of there. All right, now we got some weight off of that. Now we gotta just loosen these up and add some shims in there to space it back. I'll take one out and we'll see how long the bolt is. Okay, so we're gonna need longer bolts too. We're gonna need about half inch longer bolts. I got my two longer bolts. And I got some just nuts and washers on there to act as spacers because I couldn't find any regular spacers. It'll be fine for this. Now I'm going to take this other one out and if anything's going to fall, it'll be right now. Ah! Okay, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we got to try and... Okay, we got to loosen this one. I need to... Need this and this. We just gotta loosen this nut. And you see it's got a slot in it. So in theory, we should be able to just slide that thing right back, but I might have to get like a pry bar involved or something. In theory, this should, oh, look how easy that's moving. Easy peasy. Little bit there, little bit here. Good thing that wasn't the only thing holding it up. That's just a little safety thing. All right, so we only got, so far we only got it to go back about a quarter inch. It'll go more. Just gotta figure out how to do that. I don't think it's hitting the firewall yet. No, it's not hitting the firewall. It's not hitting the tunnel. The exhaust manifold is loose, so that shouldn't be a problem. I think we just gotta keep, keep working it a little. That's not working. Sketchy camera operations. You ready? Yeah, what are we doing here? Just hold it so it doesn't fall. Okay. It doesn't look like this transmission mount is going back. I don't know why the transmission's not going back. The mount is loose. Maybe I need to loosen the other bolts on the transmission. Let me try that. Well, there's only one bolt in it. Oh, I see the mount is bottomed out on the inside of the thing on the inside of the cross member. Like it can't go back. Might be able to flip this around. I'm not sure. All right, so I don't think we can flip this whole cross member around because the bolt holes aren't the same angle. But I think what we can do is slot this more, the bottom here, slot it more and take the rubber mount out and spin it around so that it's backwards. And that should allow the transmission to come back further. So we're gonna try that. We gotta support the transmission though with the other jack stand. Okay, we don't wanna go. 
too much. See how much that's automatically putting pressure up there. So it just needs a little bit off of there. There, I just saw this move. That's enough weight off of that. But now I gotta take this down. Think about that for a minute. Yeah, we're good. As long as this thing doesn't jump out of there, we're good. If that thing jumps out of there, this whole thing will just rotate on this bar and we'll be dead. Nah, I don't think it can fall out of there anyways. It'll, it'll get wedged in the firewall or something. It'll be fine, bro. Quit your whining. All right, all the bolts are out of the cross member. So now I just gotta take this lower bolt off, lower nut off. All right, that, oh yeah, I forgot that rubber mount. It kind of snaps in there. Yeah, and it's only, it's designed to only go one way. That's a bummer. I don't think it'll go this way. Nope. Nope, it's not designed to go that way. What can we do here? All right, so what we're gonna do is try and, we're gonna slot this mount a little bit so that we can slide the transmission back further on this mount. We're only gonna go about a quarter inch. That's really about all we can do on this end of the motor to get that to go back. It's carving nice. Yeah. You think that's enough? That's at least a quarter inch. I probably don't want to go anymore. All right, those should be big enough. Let's try that. Here we go, the true test. Oh yeah, we, get, we can come back like a half of an inch now. That's exactly what we need. All right, now we should be able to come back. Let's try and pry bar it now. You ready? Mm -hmm. There it goes. All right, you can take it out. It's going, but it's not staying. Let me go grab another one of those bolts. All right, now, now we gotta pry it while we tighten it. You need a hand? Yeah, sure. Just do that ever so gently. Well, yeah, it's definitely went back because I can't get a socket on it now. Now go a little bit more, a little more. Oh, I can. Something don't feel right. That hole's stripped out. Let off. Really? Yeah, let off for a minute. Okay. Damn hole's stripped out on the transmission. Not this side, that's probably, oh. that's probably why I didn't have it in there. Yeah, it's too, somebody stripped out the hole. Cause it's a rebuilt transmission. Oh, you know what we need to do? We just need to open up that cross member some more so that I can get a socket on it. Yeah, I think I can do that in place. Okay. It's gonna be loud. Okay, now that should work. I mean, it looks like it'll go even more. I mean, it, it's three eighths now. Gotcha. Well, oh, I see now. Now it's hitting the housing on the transmission. Look, it's hitting right there, right there. Oh. Need to, I need to chop the front of that off. All right, let me take this back out. Try to grind that corner down a little bit because it's hitting the transmission housing. That fits perfect. Right up in there, ground that thing to just the perfect angle. Now, the only thing I don't know is if the speedo thing goes in there. I don't even know what that looks like. I think it'll go in there. I don't know. Every time you change something, you change 10 things. But the other thing is we're using the Sniper EFI on this. So, um, but I think that means you still have to use a mechanical 
Speedo. I'm not sure on that. I've, I've never used the Sniper EFI before, but I think it's all contained in the throttle body, so it doesn't control external things. But we can either run a mechanical Speedo or you know, maybe there's an adapter that we can put in there and run a digital Speedo. I don't really care if it even has a Speedo. I just want to go fast right now. All right, let's go. We got these shims in here now. Okay, so I got it to go back at least uh, a half inch. I think we're a little bit, we're probably more like 9 16 Adding a couple of shims here. So that's good because that's a little bit more than what we were originally hoping for. Now these aren't really supporting the weight of the of the engine at all. They're just they're just keeping it front to back and side to side exactly where it needs to be. And then this bar up here is supporting some of the weight. But now we can take the weight off these jack stands because I've got all the bolts put back in here. And now we've got the engine set back as far as we can go. Now hopefully that gains us enough clearance for the radiator. We good on sound? All right, cool. Just want to make sure. All right, now we're gonna re recheck this. That's just a safety bar that I have in there. Now we'll let this down and everything should be fine. Get this out of the way. All right, now let's measure and see how much space we have. So we're measuring from the bottom of the water pump pulley to the face of the radiator, which right now with no clearance is three and an eighth. So that's close. That's gonna be real close because we need that fan is three inches deep plus the pulley thick the pulley thickness so really it's gonna be like a gnat hair away from the radiator now let's see oh look I, I didn't have it bolted in all the way here hold that in there like that let me check that let me check it if I squeeze that over now that didn't really help much no. no all right well only thing we can do now is try to get the fan on there well I don't have the pulley well I can take the pulley off the other one let me go get the pulley off, except now it's sitting on that block. I don't think I could put the pulley on there. So what we're gonna have to do is just use some spacers to represent the pulley thickness. Getting enough space for the fan to clear the radiator is one thing, but getting it all installed is a whole nother thing because you see this little nub on the end of the water pump? That's the pilot bushing or the hub centric bushing for the fan. The fan has to go this way far enough to go over that and then lock into that. So we have to have an additional three eighths of an inch just to do that. Well then, even if you could get the fan on there, then you gotta be able to get the fan shroud on there. So how do you do that? Well, I think what we're gonna have to do, even in, on the final run of this final assembly, we're gonna have to put the fan shroud over all of the, the pulleys and stuff first. So, and then put the fan on and then put the fan shroud on. All right, so this is the hole that the water pump plugs into. Now the other challenge is you gotta have the bolts long enough. Basically the bolts have to be the perfect length. So they have to be short enough to go down in here, which these ones just barely are. And then long enough to fully thread into that flange. So that's the exact length bolt that you need. Now what we're gonna try and do is, unless we have plenty of clearance, uh, we may try and rep put some shims in here to replicate the thickness of the pulley because we're not putting a pulley on it right now. I don't have an extra one and the other one's on the real motor. So let's see if we can get this on there first. I mean, might not even be able to do this. You gotta be careful not to gouge the, the fins on the radiator. Oh, it went on there and it's gonna clear. So I'm gonna put some shims in there so we can bolt it up just so that we know for sure. Are you kidding me? Oh, all right, we got something to confess. This fan isn't the right fan for this setup. It's a, it's a Mopar fan. It's a big block Mopar fan. It's close to the right year of this car, but it's not the correct one for this car. So I've already modified this fan a little bit. Actually, it's not my fault. It's kind of my fault, but not really. I bought it off of a guy on eBay. He said it was for this car and it, it wasn't. So I've already trimmed the outer perimeter of this fan. Each blade I trimmed meticulously the same so that it's not out of balance, but I didn't trim enough. We're gonna have to shorten the diameter of this fan a little bit more because it's hitting the tank on the radiator. Let me get a shot real quick of that where it's hitting. I, I mean, you see this little notch right here? Mm -hmm. That's what that notch is for. 
but it's just barely, it's just barely. It's just barely hitting the radiator. Actually, you know what? By the time we get it bolted up, it might not touch. Let's, let's tighten it up first before we get too excited. All right, so now we're gonna just place the fan shroud over here like that. And, you know, at first glance, it looks like it'll probably work, but there's no, it's not gonna bolt up to the radiator. I mean, it fits the fan, kinda. Kinda, sorta. Yeah, not really. It doesn't fit the petcock thing perfectly. Did you order the Mopar mashup kit? I don't know, man. Maybe I got it on here upside down? No, because it's got the little notch here for the petcock. No, that could be the notch for the hose, for the upper hose. Oh yeah, it could be. I might have it on there backwards. Let's spin it around. Definitely not on there backwards because now it's offset the wrong direction. Well, unless, no, no, I had it on there the right way. So these Mopar engines are offset to the passenger side and so is this fan shroud. So the fan shroud fits the radiator the best right there, but it doesn't fit this petcock. So I'm gonna have to notch that, maybe. Or maybe I just, yeah, it doesn't fit the top tank correctly. Let's, uh, Let's put that brace back in there and then we'll lower it down and inspect it from the top. All right, so now we got the car on the ground and we're trying to see how it's fitting up here, the fan shroud, but it's, it's not gonna come up high enough to sit on the radiator correctly. It needs to come up here where this is, this is flush, but the fan is preventing it from doing so. I almost think the, you know, based off of that, well, no, let's see. Remember this hole needs to go down anyway, so the radiator could stand to go down. That would help this situation. Yeah, well, why don't we notch the bottom holes a little bit and see if we can get the radiator to go down a little bit. I mean, it's only gonna make hood clearance better. Not that that's an issue that I know of, but it might be. But if the radiator could go down, that would help. And then we may need to shim the engine mounts up a little bit. All right, let's 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 try and get the radiator to go down a little. So I think we can, no, I can't do that. Let's see, how am I gonna do that? And then it's just, uh, just barely. Let me get a marker and mark that so we can trim the fan blade. So, you know, why don't you just get another fan? Well, we could, but then you're back to hoping you get the right one. So I'm gonna just trim it, man. It doesn't matter, the fan doesn't know that you trimmed it. As long as you trim each blade exactly the same, it should be perfectly balanced, right? Right? So that's my theory. And plus we want it maximum, as maximum diameter as possible. So that, especially for a big block like this, we wanna be drawing as much air through there as possible. So anyways, let's take that off. All right, so here's the deal, 74 big block Chrysler. It's just a few years too new. That's why it's not fitting. But if we can get it to work, it'll be fine. So now we gotta trim these fins a little bit more. I've already trimmed them once, but it's not that hard to do. Here's, I'll show you how to do it. Let me get a piece of tape and an X-Acto knife. Now I gotta find my spray glue right here. And then we're gonna use some of this. The old classes in session, what is this everybody? Arts and crafts, baby, arts and crafts. Not the chipboard. All right, we're gonna, chipboard, or chipboard. We're gonna trim this first one the way I like it, roughly. We're not gonna spend time smoothing it and everything right now, we're just gonna get her done. It's just aluminum, so it cuts fairly easy. All right, that shape right there should work. Now, what I'm gonna do, take a chunk of this, A little too big, I'm gonna cut some off. That's still just a rough cut. We're just trying to get it close here. There. 
All right, now, all right, here's what we're gonna do. Well, it's not clamping on there the way I want it to. Hang on, let me cut, let me slice this. I got a relief to slice that because that's a reverse curve right there. And it's not conforming to that edge the way I want. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna trace this bottom edge first and I want this edge as a reference so I can line it up on all the other ones exactly. Okay, now we're gonna cut this really neatly on that line. Okay, now we line that edge back up like that. Now we want to trace this top edge. And then while we're at it, while we got it held in the right spot, we're going to trace the new edge. And now if we fit it on there, it's exactly the right size. Now all we have to do is rotate, line up all your edges, line up that edge and that edge, and then you trace it on there. Rotate, line up your edges, trace it. Rotate, line up your edges, trace it. And so forth. You do that on every blade exactly the same and it should be pretty close to perfectly balanced. Mm, that's a lot of blades. I already did that one. Yep, that's the last one. All right, now we're ready to now we're ready to trim those. Now we want our cut to be pretty nice. Let's start on the first one. And we'll go this way and then all we want to have to do in the end is lightly sand those so that the edges are smooth. And there we have it. New fan blade shape. They're not even sharp. All right, let's put the fan back on. All right, let's clearance these holes a little. went a little bit too much. Now it's hitting the bottom of the core support. <laughs> Looks like it might have took a nose dive into a curb at some point. I think that's supposed to be there, but this bump here wasn't. Let's see if that was enough. pretty much right on the money. That one lines up now. Threads are kind of jacked up on it. But if I don't tap it, if I get ahead of myself, putting a stainless bolt in there, game over, buddy. Actually, I could probably get away with a little bit of anti-seize and just send it. All right, now I can snug all those up. All right, finally, got that one. Okay, now we can put the fan shroud back on. Thank you. See, now if I can put it on there without the fan, that's about how it should fit. That's actually pretty, pretty nice. If I could get it like that right there, I would be happy because then I could utilize these holes that are on the sides here. And then all I'd have to do is make one, a couple of tabs off of this side. But chances of that lining up perfectly like that, probably not gonna happen. Now. Let's just focus on the fan for a second. If I can get the fan to clear the shroud. Now the fan clears the radiator tank, no problem. So now we just gotta get this shroud. I don't know if it's gonna work out, man. It's like I'm doing all this work to try and get this junk plastic shroud to fit. Might as well just make one that's right, right? I mean, that's what happens with all this aftermarket stuff. Nobody realizes they think, oh yeah, it says it works on their website. 
and then you get it and then it just none of this stuff lines up even the radiator holes didn't line up the shroud doesn't line up there's not even tabs on the radiator for the shroud and it, it, even if you could get it to line up with the radiator the fan still hits the shroud it's just come on people i don't understand why can't people just build stuff nice see it's hitting the bottom of the shroud right there which i could almost live with that it's almost like you know we might need to well you know i won't be able to tell if we can shim the motor up or not until we get the actual engine in here and check the hood clearance but that's really the only other thing i could try because when i had the original engine mocked up before it was like that far like an eighth of an inch from hitting the hood so i can't just can't really take a gamble on raising the motor i mean it's not off a lot it's only off a little bit i don't know i just wish this stuff would you, know, you pay all this money for this stuff and it's just garbage i mean we could kind of get it to work i think if we raise the engine i mean it doesn't hit right there but as soon as i do that it hits as soon as I do that, it hits. I can't tell what's hitting. I and mean, it's hitting right down there on the bottom. I mean, we could just shorten that fan a little bit more. Either the shroud needs to go down a little bit, but actually it needs to go right there. So that's telling me the motor needs to come up, but I'm taking a risk on it, not clearing the hood. I mean, the motor could be low right now just because there's so much weight hanging off of the front. Like on this brace could be just sagging because it was flexing. And so my parts that I designed might be a little bit low but I can shim those or, you know, since I got to weld those pads on anyways, I can just, if I have it in the correct higher position shimmed up, I can just weld those pads up a little higher and it'll still be okay. If it's only a, you know, eighth of an inch or quarter inch or whatever. But I feel like if the motor came up right now, it would solve that issue. Let's see if I can jack it up from underneath and see if that fixes it. All right, so we got a jack under the engine block right now to see if that helps the fan situ fan shroud situation. It did help a little bit. See if I can get the, honestly, it's just hitting that water neck down there. I could get it to go around that. I mean, if I could get it to fit right there. Hey, look at that. Doesn't have much clearance on the bottom. Like right there, it's hitting. Right there, it's not. Let me see if I go up just a little bit more. I think that's it. That's it, the motor was just sagging a little too much. So we just gotta take note of that when we put the engine in, but we can, uh, that's close enough where I feel like we can proceed. So now it's these holes over here that line up and these, this side will need tabs on it. Really neither side lines up that great. Gotta figure out what to do about that. Okay, we're doing a little hack here. So I need a threaded insert right there but i don't want to use a rib net because I, i'll drill it too big and it'll puncture the tube these vertical tubes are very fragile and they're going to have coolant going through them we do not want to puncture one of those and they're very fragile did i say that already they're very fragile so but what we can modify a little bit is those little horizontal squiggly fins you know the ones that always get bent all the time when bugs get in them and stuff well if you look through that hole it just so happens that those fins are right behind that hole right behind here is one of those vertical tubes that we don't want to puncture and there might be one all the way over there i'm not sure let me see no there's not one on the outside there's just one on the inside but what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this little screw to thread in there and push those fins out of the way without hurting the tube. I can even watch it over here through this side just to make sure I do not hit that tube. You know, we can kind of get it started like that. See what I did? I just pushed those fins out of the way. Now that's not gonna cause the radiator to leak. All I need is just a little bit of clearance right there so that I can put this T-nut in there like that. I'm gonna get another, another little tool and smush those out of the way a little more. Yeah, there might be a tube over there on the outside. I'm not sure. I'm not going to chance it. So I'm just trying to get that threaded insert in there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shave those threads down a little bit so they're not sticking out as far. And then, then I can get that tacked on there.
on. Uh, I think I'm going to jack it up to finish welding that, but first I'm going to tack these on over here. Now, ah, why isn't it going in there? Oh, there we go. Had to get it over that neck. Okay, those two bolted right up, no problem. We've got a little bit of adjustment side to side, so that's good. We'll put it right in the middle, and then I'm gonna snug those down, but I gotta go get a so another socket. Side to side motion, I'm just gonna mount it in the middle of that travel and snug these down. Okay, so we got both of those are snug. It's looking good. Now we're gonna have to figure out some way to fill in this gap. All right, now I got the I'm using, basically using the fan shroud as a jig. Now that I got it where I want it, using it as a jig for these guys. Now these are gonna go off to the side right here, but I'm gonna have to loosen that and shift it over more. I had it in the middle, but it's gonna have to go over more. Now I'm hitting on that side. I can't go over that far. I'm gonna do this side the same, same way I did the other side. I just gotta go get two new of these and trim them down. Cause I can, I can just squeeze it a little bit to get it to clear and it'll, it'll go on there the same. That makes more sense. Let's do what makes the most sense. All right, there it goes. It's gonna go right in. I kinda have to stretch that one. It is going, look at that. And hey, it's not hitting the radiator either. What I did different there, but that's the best it's fit so far. Spoke too soon. That's hitting the shroud. So I just gotta drop it down a little. Blast! Ugh. Just stop rubbing on everything. Look, I don't lean on it, it clears. When I lean on it, it clears. It's because the motor gets pushed up when I lean on it. So I just need to, just need to raise the engine up a skosh or like that. And now look, it doesn't, doesn't hit. It's found its home. All right, so now cross your fingers. If we put that cross member in that's coming, I'm kind of glad we didn't do that today, actually. We were supposed to do that today. If we would have just welded that in without checking this first, we'd have been in a world of hurt. So. Things happen for a reason, okay? You know, buddy of mine, Jay, the poster guy, he always says, the car's trying to tell you it's not right yet. And he's, he might be right. You know, I think it's, it's probably more along the lines of these engineers that built this car had it figured out once and it only went one way. And now we're figuring out how to put it back that exact way. So it's gonna work out. I just hope that the, the, Air cleaner that we did still clears the hood. If not, we, we probably got a couple of little things we can do to fix that, but we won't know for sure until we put the actual engine in there, which I'm not doing right now. But there we go. One 67 Barracuda big block radiator with fan shroud. All right, that wraps up this episode on the 67 Barracuda. We got the uh, big block radiator installed from US Radiator. It lined up pretty good. We had to tweak a couple of little things um, had to fix a little bit of damage on the bottom of the core support. And then this fa fan shroud is supposed to be built for this car. And you know, in the end it ended up working out okay. It's, it doesn't fit perfect like, you know, a custom car, but this one's, we're going for an OEM look. So that's what it has. You know, we got it where it clears everything pretty decent. There's a couple of little things we need to clearance, but for the most part, it's where it needs to be for this big block 440. So good thing we didn't set up that front suspension yet because we were gonna have to tweak it a little bit. So next time we're gonna be setting up the front suspension that we custom made, designed. That'll be here laser cut from Sin Cut Sin. So stay tuned for that video. So it's one more thing checked off the list for peace of mind. You guys have a good weekend, we'll catch you later.